Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to put the uh, vertical shaft back in with the um, lower gear assembly already assembled. It has the same set of clutches in it as the upper. The uh, book will tell you to put 40 thousandths of shims inside the case here for your initial measurement and then we're going to put the retainer in. So let's put that back in. So again, those shims are going to hold this in place, and then we're going to put the retainer in. So this assembly is already being reassembled, um, tightened. All right, so we're going to put a little bit of gear lube on here, just to make sure that we don't call up the threads again. And we'll put that retainer in number side up. I like to take and turn it backwards. Try to get it to seat real quick. Just let it fall on the threads. Once you feel it fall on the threads, then you can turn it clockwise and make sure it doesn't bind up at all. All right. Got it. So we're going to use that retainer tool again. And the book will tell you to thread it down until it just is tight by hand. No further, because you got to check your lash later. All right. So next, what we're going to do is flip the case right side up to prepare to put the other gear and the clutches in. All right, well, we flipped it back over, and we've got the... Uh, vertical drive shaft facing up, we're gonna start reassembling. So first is that the real thin wave washer where the taper faces up. So if you follow in the book, the picture's real easy. Basically says, put this on the shaft first. So next, we're gonna put this uh, thrust bearing with the cup on. And if you try to slide that over the shaft, if you have made the mistake of not noting which one goes where, they are different sizes. So the one that faces the gear that's inside for the clutches will not fit over the shaft. The spacer washer will, but the bearing will not. So the bearing is actually smaller and inside diameter than the other one. So make sure that you pay attention when you're putting that together. So that's done. The next is I'm gonna take the two back-to-back -back bearings that I've kept in reference position, put those down inside the center of the bearing, and that the cup side of the bearing on the end of it does face down. The next one that goes inside the gear, the inner cup faces up. So you want to be pay attention to that. Lower this down gently on those bearings. It will line up on there. You flip it over. So the taper, the thrust bearing faces down. And you wanna make sure always that that cup side on the inside here, that faces towards the bearing race. So I'm gonna put that down on there next. Okay. The last piece you're gonna put in is the hub, and that's gonna go down over that bearing. Okay, the next procedure after you put the hub in is you're going to need this special fixture tool again and you're going to need this 385, 384, 9543 tool which is going to thread on here. Okay? Basically what it does is it tells you to thread this on, put this over the vertical drive shaft, hold that up, thread that down until it's snug. That's done. What we're going to do is we're going to rotate this back upside down again, and we're going to back this off a couple of turns. Okay, the next step we're going to roll this up, get this vertical as close as we can. I'm going to take the input shaft, the input gear, make sure the O-ring's not on here. 
All right, none of the oil passageways are in position. It's a pretty close fit, so just kind of nice and easy. Let it slide in. Once you get it going, it should drop the rest of the way in. There it is. Okay, again, no shims. There we go. All right, so the next step it says is to put four bolts in here to hold it down, just to hold it in position. The next procedure, what we're gonna do is set up a dial indicator and measure the end of the shaft play. So I'll do that. Okay, I've set up the dial indicator like it says in the book to do using the, uh, on the outside of the bearing housing. And basically what you've done is when you put this back together, we're not gonna tighten this inner ring all the way. You know, we wanna bring it down until it's just flush, like they said. Okay, and then brat back it out maybe a couple of turns. Okay, and what that does is let me get the indicator back on here. And I'll turn it so you maybe you can see it without the glare. That's better. Okay, so that allows this shaft to have some play in here, right? So basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to center this. So they say to rotate the gears, okay, which basically is going to center the vertical drive shaft. That's about centered for the shaft. Now what they want to do is they want you to bring the bearing retainer in, okay, until you just basically feel it touch, but you don't move the vertical drive shaft. See, I can see the bearing moving. So that basically is almost too far right there, All right? So that gets me to the point where I've centered the, the gears inside the case, and that's what they're trying to do. So we'll just see if we can move it ever so slightly more again. Nope, right there is where it's gonna move that vertical drive shaft in, see? So that's gonna move the bearing. So we don't wanna do that just till it starts to move right about there now shouldn't really have any play now i've got a little bit of play in the housing but i still want it to center oh really can't make it move now so i would say that's the center point all right without moving anything Take the bolts out, take the vertical shaft out. So basically zero the indicator and see how far it moves. So I've moved that. Um, and that's going to be oh, about 16 thousandths. I would say, yeah, 16 thousandths of an inch, and I have to convert that to millimeters. All right, I've removed the dial indicator. That's the next step. Turn it right side back up. Put the fixture holder in here. Hold that vertical drive shaft. And remove the special tool without dropping it. Now they want you to pull the inner hub out. So next, you're going to remove the disc hub and the bearings and the inner hub as well. So I'm going to see if I can take it all out one shot. And I have to flip it over to take the upper bearing out and shim that before I put it back together. So the last thing I need move that spacing ring in there. Don't forget the little tapered spring washer. Let me take it apart. 
Okay, so next time what we're gonna do, flip it over and I'm gonna show you the rest of the shimming procedures. All right, so when we take it back apart, we're gonna shim this lower gear. So.